Hi, I'm Sonia Rosman. I'm a psychotherapist, a medical doctor, and author of seven books on process addictions. Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel, where we talk about addictions, about relationships, and about trauma. Is it true that addicts cannot just stop their behavior? Well, by definition, addiction means it's a disease where somebody's will is impaired, so he cannot stop his behavior even if he wants to. By the behavior, we don't always mean just using drugs or using alcohol. We also mean those behaviors that are not so uh, connected with substances, like playing video games or gambling or some sexual behaviors. But the addicts argue that they no longer can stop even if they want to. We observe their behavior and we feel it's a bad behavior. They are so-called liars, cheats and thieves. They uh, forget getting the child out of preschool. They spend the family's money on their addiction. They spend too much time playing video games instead of helping. And we call this bad behavior. So we think that addicts are too irresponsible, too immature. They are morally irresponsible. They just too self-indulgent. And we hate them for it. And we hate the fact that now they seem to have caught the experts too. So the experts argue that addiction is a disease and that in fact the addicts cannot stop their using. To understand the important question about the loss of control in addiction, one must understand the difference between use, abuse and addiction. Use is something everybody eventually does. We all sometimes eat sugary sweets, we all sometimes play on the computer too long. We all sometimes drink some alcohol, or most people do. Some people may choose to repeat this use frequently because it makes them feel better. And they have the experience that when they do this, their problems seems to, seem to shrink, their emotions seem to calm down, and they feel better. And they repeat this behavior just for the sake of feeling better, even though they do not change the cause of feeling bad. They must repeat it more and more and more often. And this is considered abuse, because if we use it for the sake of feeling better, like chocolate makes everybody feel better, alcohol ma makes your troubles go away, somewhere along the way, in frequent use of the substances and behaviors that change our moods. There's a thin, invisible line, and when you cross it, you become addicted. There's no red lights, there's no sign to tell you that today you have a problem. It's invisible, but there are some warning signs, like when you start forgetting what you did the night before under the influence, or when you become obsessed with the behavior and think of it all the time. But the sure sign are the remarks of the ones that love you, your family, your friends. They will tell you, please stop, this is too much, this has gone too far. But what happens is that your brain has learned how to switch off, how to numb the feelings. It starts repeating it. The brain learns, and what the brain learns, the brain does. And then we have this situation like, you know, Google Ads, or maybe we should say that uh, Google works like brain, not the other way around. Google and our brain both learn what we want, what we prefer, by frequent repeating this behavior. And this behavior then becomes automatic. Have you tried to switch off the ads on Google? It doesn't work. And the same thing happens with the brain. 
somehow you have lost your ability to stop using, to choose your behavior. Even if you choose not to use, you will use it anyway. And this is what is addiction. You will argue that you can stop anytime, but you cannot prove it. When you try to stop, you start to feel really bad. You feel anxiety, you feel physical symptoms. And only the next use will try to make these feelings a little bit better. What happened? Let me explain something about the brain. The brain looks just like those two flowers. If you took off your skull, then what you would see underneath would be the wrinkled area of the cortex of the brain. This is where we are smart. This is where we have power of choice, logic, morals, spirituality. And let's see how the brain looks when you cut it in two. You can see the cortex and underneath there's an area where the centers for emotions are. Emotions like fear, like love, like uh, lust, like uh, all the emotions a person has. This is there and it's called the midbrain. Down there, there's a brain stem, like the stem of this flower. And it continues down to spinal cord. And in this area here, there are centers for automatic behavior, like you can breathe without thinking, your heart pumps without you thinking about it, abdomen works without having to think about it. This is automatic behavior that takes care of immediate survival. In the front of, uh, and in the middle of our brain, there's a connection between the centers for thinking, feeling and survival. And this uh, connection is responsible for us feeling reward, feeling good, feeling better. Normally, in a person who is not addicted, the cortex has top-down function to control the lower areas. And this is what goes wrong with addiction. There, the lower centers, survival and emotions, take over and the cortex cannot stop them anymore. Down to top, control has taken over. That's why we call it a disease because it's something wrong with the organ, which is the brain. It is true that for the addict, the choice to use is no longer the choice whether to feel good or feel a little less good. It's the choice of survival. It's the choice for uh, feeling emotionally overwhelmed because this is a part of the brain that is in control. And this is why we call it a disease. Still, there is good news. Addicts stop every day. If they're serious about stopping, they can go into a recovery program and stick to their plan of recovery or, or of therapy. Then all these changes in time can be reversed. They can't be stopped permanently. So you can't just fool around and start using again after a year or two because your brain will remember very soon. But if you stick to your program, stick to abstinence, do the right things, then there is complete recovery from addiction. If you learned something new today, please consider liking and sharing this video. To learn more about my work, please visit my websites or find me on social media. Thank you for watching.